Hi, everyone. It's Henry DeVries. Welcome to the Agency Rainmaker TV show. This is where we look at how agency owners make it rain, both for their agencies and also for their clients. And today, I've got the head of the Flying V Group, Rob Farian. Rob, so glad for you to join us today. Thanks for having me, Henry. Really happy to be here. Well, we're really interested in what you have to say. Uh, first off, tell us who the who is for the Flying V Group. Who do you help? Flying V Group, we work with business owners, CEO, executive levels, uh, primarily in the professional services space. Uh, so we do a lot of work with law firms, uh, healthcare clinics, uh, insurance, real estate. Uh, so really those kind of old school markets, I would say, or, or verticals that have been around for uh, quite some time and really helping to accelerate their digital transformation when it comes to uh, marketing and advertising services for their particular firms or clinics. Well, thank you for that work. I like that you have a, a, a niche, as we say in America, niche up in Canada, <laughs> that you have a niche with the professional services. And they have a challenge in people want to know who to trust in that area. And we've really changed how we gather information these days. So thanks for leading them into the uh, digital frontier here. Of course. Well, what what do you do for them? Tell me about what you do for them. Yeah, I think I think you nailed it with how people make those buying decisions with those types of individuals is trust is a very important aspect. So uh, whether you're working in the financial space, obviously legal, we talked about healthcare, um, buyers are, they're doing their homework. Uh, so they're looking at a lot of different options uh, when determining who to work with. Uh, they're vetting not only the firm itself, but the leaders within the firm as well. So whether that's at the partner level, uh, if it is a doctor, um, they're looking online for that social proof uh, in terms of, of who else has used them, what experience have they had, were they successful, uh, if any sort of success rates can be conveyed. Uh, so that's where we really help. Uh, we help to emphasize the expertise and authority uh, that our clients have in their particular space. Uh, so a lot of that has to do with that social proof uh, through social media channels. It might be the content that they create on their website in terms of uh, showing people how they go through the process or what maybe differentiates themselves um, from other service providers and really working to create that uh, visibility and that trust, which trust can definitely be built online nowadays just due to the social nature of the internet uh, to, to kind of break down those barriers for the potential customers when they're determining, okay, which of these individuals that I have vetted out online am I going to start the process with um, in terms of reaching out for either a consultation or, or an initial uh, discovery call, whatever that process may be for, for our individual clients. Rob, I've written about these people a lot when it comes to business development and Forbes.com. And one of the flip sides of this is how to be untrustworthy and what I found, and you know, I'd like your if you concur, is that if you are behind the times with digital and the web and these other things, people might be leery of are you keeping up with your skills in the profession? Or you know, you are are you up on the law? Are you up on medical procedures? Are you up on a tax law? I mean, do you find that to be true too? No doubt. I mean, a lot of times now, law isn't a great example, right? But uh, those firms that understand the value of the digital space, they're able to use their website, their social media platforms to show that they're up to date on new laws that may be coming out into the space, or they're updating on uh, what's happening in the courts with specific cases and what that might mean for future cases after the fact. Um, so I think a lot of times what we see is there's disconnect between our clients and the reality of where they're actually at as a business versus what the perception of them is online. And so a lot of them have run successful businesses for years and years and years, but when people are searching and, and looking for them online or they're unfamiliar 
uh, with who they are. Maybe it's a couple degrees of separation versus just an immediate referral or word of mouth referral. Um, you know, you need to have that perception online that you're the best of the best as well, even if you are in reality. And so we do see a mismatch of that quite a bit to where, uh, you know, we have successful businesses that have been around, but when you go to look at them online, what they have, the information that they're presenting doesn't give that individual that same sense or feel that they would get if they were in their office or on a phone call with them. The problem is, is that's the first step, right? Is we need them to see online that, okay, the perception that they have is one to your point that is up to date. Um, they are a real, just a real business in general, right? There's a lot of fluff online that has to get sorted through. And again, that's where we're trying to bring down um, those barriers or uh, maybe those reasons that they would not reach out because either, you know, their website doesn't look very good or they don't know who's a part of the firm or there's no reviews online for them. Um, so we're really trying to make sure that the reality of the situation that they have is also uh, exemplified online uh, from a perception standpoint. One agency owner I interviewed said, content isn't king. Content is the entire back row of the chessboard these days. Uh, what, what's your view on content? I, I could not agree more. Um, and not to get every conversation seems to skew towards the AI machine learning type stuff now and people thinking that, okay, yeah, we can create this AI content and that's going to eliminate you know content production or SEO work online. I think it does the complete opposite uh, for the high quality types of firms and individuals that are those uh, top achievers in their space. And the reason being is that they can provide experience um, and perspective that a robot or AI cannot provide. They can uh, go back and look at case studies or um, be able to talk about specific scenarios that you could never get out of just an AI created content. And even more importantly is you're gonna have a huge influx of new content that is being distributed online. But I think what that's doing is it's actually lowering the quality level of content to where when you are producing that high quality content and information um, that you inject your expertise into, those types of firms that understand the value of that are gonna create even more separation, I think, um, from just the status quo, because that's what we're seeing happening is a lot more contents getting generated. Unfortunately, uh, the quality is is basically just all middle of the road. It's it's all vanilla and all pretty much the same when you're only relying on that AI generation. I should ask the where and when question. So uh, where are you located and when did you start this business? Uh, I am located in Southern California, uh, more particularly Irvine, California. So about 30 minutes, 30 miles, not minutes south of uh, LA. And then I started flying V Group in 2015. Why in internet years, that's a lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> I know it, 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 uh, it goes by fast and, and you're definitely right. Um, you know, the type of stuff we're working on now versus what we were working on when we started as change dramatically and it continues to change at an even more rapid pace as as every day goes by so i could not agree more <laughs> well to go farther back 20 years ago i was interviewing this law firm and the the managing partner was so proud they were a million dollar law firm and he told me we don't need a website <laughs> and a year later they were out of business wow that's wild. you know it was just it had changed that quickly that people like Oh, if they can't if they can't have a website. How can I trust that they're even keeping up with the law? Um, well, let's talk about how you make it rain for Flying V Group. Uh, the different things you do to make it rain to bring in clients. Right. Yeah, a lot of marketing agencies. You know, when you look at okay, what services is it that they provide? You know, you're getting very similar type of stuff, right? You've got obviously your, your website. You got SEO work, content writing. Uh, paid media buying, email marketing. I think what separates and differentiates Flying V Group is we really come with a uh, consultation hat on uh, when we're having that engagement with our clients. So we're really looking to build marketing processes 
and systems for our clients that leverage, yes, those individual services, but they work uh, together uh, to create a machine from a lead generation standpoint, might be online sales, whatever the particular business might be. Uh, so for us, it's really important that uh, we come in and we peel back the layers of not just the marketing that the business is doing, but the layers of the business itself. How does the business run and operate? What does the sales process look like? Uh, who are their customers? What are their what do their customers care about? What are their pain points? Um, so for us, we're really consultative in that nature and that, yes, we're marketers, but we want to understand the business from just a general business perspective as well. So what keeps our owners, founders, CEOs up at night? And then with our expertise from a marketing perspective, okay, how can we solve those problems with the different tools that we have in our toolkit? And we have to take that approach because it's my belief that, you know, marketing isn't a one size fits all type of type of system, right? Even if you're talking about, you know, we've talked uh, talked about law quite a bit here, you know, you might have two law firms, they might be targeting the same type of target demographic, but one might be a mature established group, 20 years of experience versus another might be an individual lawyer just starting out. And so that's where the recommended strategy that we might have for the more established brand um, would be a lot different than someone that's just starting out. So for us, it's really putting an emphasis on that understanding. Part of my job is to put myself in the shoes of our client. And that allows us as we progress and make iterations to the campaign adjustments, I'm starting to think the way that they think and then applying, okay, their methodology and thought process into what I know from a marketing perspective. Um, and then with that, there's a lot of feedback too. So the market, as you know, is very dynamic. As we mentioned, things change constantly. Uh, so that's where, yeah, we might start out with, okay, this is our specific game plan. But as we get data and information, as we start having conversations with clientele, that product shift, you know, it, that product makeup starts, starts to shift. Um, because at the end of the day, I mean, our goal is to um, generate as much of a multiple as we can from a return standpoint um, based on, okay, not only just leads in, but leads in that generate closes that then has revenue uh, amount tied to it that we can loop all the way back to, okay, where did that attribution come from? And so I think that's where having that system, complementary pieces as well that are working in unison together, uh, that's really where we excel is, you know, we're not siloed. Uh, we're looking at this from more of a holistic and comprehensive uh, strategy standpoint. I like you tie it back to revenue. Oh, speaking of those attorneys, there's a lot of specialties. I asked one attorney once, I said, what kind of law do you practice? And he said, rent law. Whatever law pays the rent, that's what I practice. So, <laughs> Doesn't but matter. really, I mean, there's... Uh, you know, there's uh, employee law, there's criminal defense, there's, uh, uh, we mentioned uh, family law, uh, there's these different areas that uh, they practice and specialize. So, um, but I wanted to go to a different question. Uh, I'm curious. So uh, how big are you now? Uh, how many uh, people, like W2 versus 1099, what's the team look like? Yeah, so W-2 employees, we have eight employees currently. Uh, that doesn't include partnership or partner level. So myself, I have two other partners. Uh, one's my brother and then our other, Brennan Smith. Um, and then, yeah, depending on projects, right, we do have 1099 that we work with. So we have anywhere from 10 to 15 of those just based on, you know, project cycles, right? Especially yeah. on the bigger like web design development. Um, you know, we're looking at on a project by project basis. So uh, when we have an influx of those web projects come in, you know, at that point we can call upon, okay, the specific needs from a, from a resource standpoint. Sure. And, and I'm interviewing a lot of people who are using white labeled services where they'll get uh, people in India and people in the Philippines uh, adding to the team when you need to beef up. Uh, so a lot of different models for that these days. Thanks for sharing that. Well, yeah. Rob, this has been very instructive. Thanks so much. Uh, I've enjoyed when we've met face-to-face uh, -face up at the University of California at Irvine, and 
I hope to see you again at some of uh, the live events up there. And thank you so much for being with, uh, with us today. So that's been this episode of Agency Rainmaker TV show. And until we meet again, make it rain.